Thanks a lot, Rita. And to Fabian to sit, set the scene here, very nice talk. So I'm going to present a case and stop a few times and discuss some of the issues Fabian already have raised uh, to do this combined procedure. So this is a typical patient for the MitraClip, and 78-year-old female. She had history of surgery and aortic bypass five years back. She's in chronic atrial fibrillation, preserved LV function. She got a moderate to severe mitral regurgitation due to severe dilatation of the left atrium and also the mitral annulus. And also the PML was quite restrictive. She's very symptomatic. And this is her echocardiography. There's, a, a, as you see, at least a, a severe mitral regurgitation here. She also had an indication for atrial fibrillation. First of all, her chat vasque score is 3, her split score is 2, and maybe more important, she's been very difficult to have in a stable INR uh, value under warfarin treatment. So this was the team who did the procedure. Uh, Nicola Edelman was doing the echo, Oli de Baga and Fatih, one of our fellows, and myself did the, uh, the interventional procedure. And you see that this part over here in the medial commissure is uh, the place uh, where we have the regurgitation. So we are going to aim for the clip a little medial to the center, if possible. And the mechanism for the mitral regurgitation, this patient just remind us. Yeah, it's a, it's a patient with long stand, standing AFib and a very large left atrium and annuli dilatation. And uh, so it's actually uh, a secondary uh, mitral regurgitation uh, due to uh, dilatation. Uh, and that is actually very, very suitable for the mitral clip procedure. What you can see in this view is actually you have almost like a pseudo prolapse of the anterior leaflet uh, going under the posterior. So what we first aim now for is that we aim for perpendicularity from the clip to the co-optation line. So we need to go some counterclockwise. Counterclockwise? Yes, we have to go counterclockwise. Maybe a little posterior also. Yeah, we can correct oh. for that later. We go a little bit posterior as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Nicola, I try to go across the valve. Okay, like this. So, and we actually saw that the clip this was visible the posterior during the entrance, so on. it's a sign of not going too much out of plane. Again, I think you have it now here. Yeah. Both are on now. I think so too. Yeah, certainly on. If you want, you can let me know. I can lower the grippers if you're happy. Yeah. Both leaflets are on. One, so, Nikolai, yeah. I bring the grippers down. Yeah, I try to bring the grippers down. Okay, grippers down, and I close the clip. <coughs> and then we can take some tension away from, yeah. because we so over pull the system slightly to the left edge. <laughs> a bit forward here, yeah. okay. So if we look in now in the two-chamber view, we can see that the clip is quite central and just a little bit medial then. So it looks like it's the position we were aiming at. And we see that there's not really much coming back. The regurgitation is almost gone, just very discreet yet. So now to the first question. So this patient who had a severe mitral regurgitation, which has now been treated with a mitral clip, is this patient at an increased risk for thromboembolic episode after the procedure, or is its risk the same as it was before the procedure? So, please vote here. It was four millimeter mercury at the end of the procedure. So, the majority of, of you think that the risk is unchanged after the mitral clip. Can we go back to the slide, please? So this is another patient who actually received a, a transcatheter mitral valve replacement. And what you often see in these patients, they have a huge left atrium, often 
a decreased cardiac output. They had atrial fibrillation. So when you have a huge, uh, large regurgitation, you see there's a lot of flow in the left atrium. But when you close, uh, uh, remove the regurgitation by the clip, you see that the flow suddenly is becoming very sluggy. You have this smoke, which I think is an increased risk for these patients uh, and enforce the indication for do something uh, to prevent a stroke. What you can appreciate is also in the large atrium that you actually see smoke here. Uh, now that the regurg is reduced, uh, which could be an argument for the closure of the left atrium appendage. And of course we keep our delivery system in the left atrium because in this case we are planned still to add a left atrial appendage closure. So you know, the, the way we often do the transeptal puncture for the mitre clip is try to puncture superior and posterior. And for the clip, it's very important where you have your puncture because if you're too far away or too close to the leaflet, you won't really have a good result. And also, if you're not posterior, it's also very difficult to, to get coaxial. But that's different for the, mitre, for the LA occlusion. We often want to, to puncture in a more inferior as aspect. So the second question to you is, can the same transeptal puncture be used for both mitre clip and left uh, uh, atrial appendage closure? Yes or no, you should do another puncture in a more inferior aspect to optimize uh, the success rate for the clo uh, LAA closure of three, I don't know. So most, uh, almost the half of you think that it doesn't matter, you can just continue to do it. Okay, what we're going to do is, right now, we're going to take out the microclip delivery system and we're going to replace it with an 18 French uh, uh, cook sheet again. So we're going to bring in a stiff wire, yeah, bring it in. Bring the catheter also up, you want it? And we have the stiff wire which is going to the left atrium. So now we can take it from there to bring the delivery sheet, the 45-45 delivery sheet of uh, the amulet. So Fadi, you will control the wire here. So let's see where we have the wire, okay. You keep the wire. Normally it should not have a lot of resistance here to cross the interatrial septum because of course a much bigger system has been across. You see the pigtail just outside the appendage now. Okay. It needs so to come let's a little see more lateral. Maybe a slightly anterior torque or what does it do? Does it go into the appendage uh, here? Almost, yeah. So a little bit of turning will come down. I feel just resistance with my pigtail here, so I think it could be on in. on the entrance of the, yeah, it's actually down in the, you can see it. Okay, so it is in. It's in place. Okay, then what I do is, somebody can maybe hold, Lini, you can hold the pigtail here, and then I will push my delivery system closer. I hope to get in smoothly into the appendage. Okay, okay now I'm gonna cine. Okay, so what we see is that uh, the pigtail, first of all, is nice in the left atrium, uh, l left atrial appendage. Our sheet uh, still has to be advanced uh, slightly more because if we have going to take out the pigtail here, then we risk that the, the, our delivery sheet will fall out uh, of the left atrial appendage. So before we do this change of the pigtail with our device, we will have to push it slightly deeper in. We also can evaluate here that it's indeed uh, a kind of a chicken wing um, anatomy. The, on the other hand, what my evaluation is here, that for the sandwich technique, we can try to do a little sandwich technique, but there's a lot of trabecularization uh, of that wing itself. So we don't have to count that that lobe is gonna settle very nicely deep into that uh, wing of the, of the chicken wing. So I think we, Nikolai, maybe you can do some measurements here as well. So as a routine, we do CT scan prior to all our LA closure, and we have a good, uh, uh, measurements prior to the procedure, what uh, the size is. So, my next question to you. Is the pre-procedural sizing of the left HL appendage applicable after the mitre clip? Yes, we don't need to, to remeasure, or no, the hemodynamic uh, condition has changed, so we need to, to remeasure, or three, I don't know.
we, the question is whether we do the CT scan under loading. Yeah, all patient is has volume uh, fluid before the CT scan. So the majority of the of you think that we need to repeat the measurements after it, and I think that could be be bit correct. So if you go back to the slide, this is just one maybe uh, extreme example of a patient who underwent a uh, mysoclip procedure, had two clip, and you can see that the pressure in the left atrium prior to the procedure was 50 millimeter mercury, after the first clip came down to 35 millimeter mercury, and then 18 millimeter mercury. So for sure in some cases you're going to see it's going to be smaller, the appendage, and you will undersize it. Maybe not as important if, it's, if, you, uh, if you measured too, too small diameter. But there could be a, a, a case here for repeat your measurements after uh, treating the mitral regurgitation. You can, in fact, uh, take first the pigtail out slowly. Yeah. Okay, good. So normally here I will make the ball shape of the lobe. So normally I do that by unsheathing. But because we're here maybe at the edge of the appendage, I will also push slightly on the ball. Can you see the ball shape here? So it's just yeah. below the CX level now. Okay, let's check this on fluoro also. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check this on Cine. Okay, I think we have to travel a slightly deeper in. We can do that if we want to aim for a sandwich. We're going to push it like a few millimeters deeper in. Yeah, okay, and then I'm going to push the ball out right now, okay? So I'm going to push the ball out. You give me freedom to also... Okay. It came slightly out maybe, let's see. I can, of course, make the hole. We can give uh, maybe contrast here again to see if we're happy with this or not. You see now two thirds is uh, below the CX level, so. It looks like a good compression on. Let's, uh, develop, let's deploy the whole system, okay? <laughs> because by time also this, of course, yeah, you we see, first thing we can evaluate is on just Cine is that there is indeed a tire shape, so we, there is compression on both sides of the lobe. This is a good sign. There is a little bit of separation also between the disc and the lobe, especially on the superior part, on the inferior part uh, not in fact. So we have to check that. Sometimes that can still come if you do a tug test and you bring back the disc, then sometimes there still, uh, still comes some separation. It seems to be pretty good stuck there. I can also give some contrast right now. Well, it seems like a nice closure of the appendage. There's uh, no contrast going in there anymore. It's, uh, there's, there's no full uh, sandwich, of course, but you see that the distal part of that lobe is going a little bit in that, uh, in that uh, wing of the, but as said, I expected there was a lot of trabecularization in that wing, so it cannot, that lobe cannot go full in. So I think we're done here. Yeah, so the nice. Size device, nice position, no leak. Yes. You agree, Nikolai, what you see in echo? Yeah, it's a nice lining of the outer layer and a good deep position below the CX level, so. Okay. So just to conclude that um, combined procedure with a mitral valve repair and LA closure. So I think, at least personally, that the Patient's risk for thromboembolic event is actually higher after treating the mitral regurgitation. And also a combined mitral clip and LA closure has been shown several times. It's feasible to do it. You may consider from patient to patient whether you can use the same transeptal access or you should do a, a, another one for the, transept, for the left appendage closure, a little bit more inferior. And also remember that left atrium will become smaller after uh, the repair of the mitral regurgitation, and you may consider to remeasure the size of the left appendage before you choose your device size. And maybe what is 
The main limitation for spreading this uh, concept of combined procedure is reimbursement. Even though it's, of course, better for the patient, at many institutions, this is a limitation for what you can do, how many procedures you can do at the time for the patients. Thank you.